The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. shares confidence that his administration appeared to have steered the economy in the right direction. The Justice Department vowed to instill reforms in the embattled Bureau of Corrections, including the reshuffling of its personnel and stopping contrabands inside the National Penitentiary. Justice Secretary Boying Rumulia speaks about the possible admission of suspended Bureau of Corrections Chief Gerald Bantag to the Witness Protection Program. Meta Platforms Incorporated announces it's, it will reduce its workforce by 13% or more than 11,000 employees through first quarter next year. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, the 10th of November, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Harding Delgado. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. meets the business leaders in Cambodia. During the said meeting, the president invited Cambodian businesses to come to the Philippines to look for investment opportunities. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is optimistic with the country's economic growth. During his meeting with Cambodian business leaders, the president said that his administration appeared to have steered the economy in the right direction as evidenced by recent economic figures. Noting external forces, however, posed a challenge. President Marcos cited the recent economic figures for the third quarter of this year with the country's unemployment rate dropping to 5%. According to the National Economic and Development Authority, the Philippine economy grew by 7.6% in the same period. As the Philippine economy emerges from the pandemic, according to the chief executive, the government needs partners from the private sector, adding that his administration changed many of the policies and procedures when it comes to public-private partnerships and even government-to-government -government partnerships. President Marcos Jr. told businessmen that his government is working for direct investment into the country to boost its manufacturing sector and make it a significant contributor to the gross domestic product or GDP. With this, PBBM invited Cambodian businesses to come to the Philippines, particularly as the world recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic, highlighting the much improved investment opportunities in the country. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. A farmer's group sees that prices of agriculture commodities may increase if the local production decreases towards the end of 2022. They also appealed to the government to fast-track the assistance for the farmers to encourage them to continue farming. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, recorded a 1.18% increase in the value of agriculture production in the third quarter of 2022. This is due to the increase in production of crops, livestock, and poultry commodities. But the chairman of the Federation of Free Farmers said that if the production from January to September will be added, there is almost no difference as compared with last year. Kung medyo Titignan natin ang mga specific commodities like kwan po, uh, crops sector, lahat po ng pananin, palay, mais, uh, etc. Uh, bumaba pa, bumaba ang, kwan, ang production o production value po by 1%. The impact in agriculture of the tropical cyclones like carding and paeng will be included in the fourth quarter survey of PSA. Hindi ako mabibigla. Kung sa fourth quarter ng 2022 ay makikita natin yung full effect ng pag, pag, pagbawas po ng gamit sa pataba ng ating mga magsasaka. Gawa, pa, gawa po ng napakamahal ang presyo ng fertilizer. Uh, plus the, ang epekto ng sunod-sunod ng mga kalamidad. Montemayor said that if production decrease, 
the prices is also expected to increase. He suggested that the government intervention, like fertilizer and seed subsidies, should be expedited to help farmers boost local production. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Light Rail Transit Authority announced that there will be no fare increase in LRT Line 1 and LRT Line 2. J.P. Nunez tells us why. Light Rail Transit Authority or LRTA disclosed that the Light Rail Manila Corporation or LRMC filed a petition last April on fare increase in LRT1. The latest petition was the fourth time since the LRMC entered the concession agreement with the LRTA way back 2015. The LRMC is asking an additional of 5 peso increase on boarding fare in LRT1. According to LRTA Administrator Attorney Hernando Cabrera, the petition is already on board level and it will take time to grant the petition. With the current status, LRTA assures the public that there will be no fare increase in LRT Line 1 and LRT Line 2 as of this time. Yung pamasay sa Line 1 at saka Line 2, pareho pa rin. Walang pagbabago. Status ko tayo dyan. Hindi tayo mag increase bukas. Hindi tayo mag increase next week. Hindi tayo mag increase next month. Administrator Cabrera explained that the petition will still be evaluated by the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board and the Department of Transportation. Once granted, the fair hike will be utilized for the improvement and rehabilitation of the railway system. But if the petition will be denied, the government will continue to subsidize the railways. Pag tinaasan mo naman masyado, kung sakali ano, kung sakali magkaroon ng fair adjustment tapos tinaan tinaasan mo siya ng sobra, malaki nga ang maliliko mo sana. Ang problema mawawalan ka ng pasahero. Why? Imbis na sumakay sa sa tren, sasakay na lang ng jeep, 'di ba? Sasakay na lang ng bus. So magiging self-defeating ngayon yung fair adjustment mo. Administrator Cabrera said LRT fare increase will be applicable on the same transit as it is considered as the same mode of transportation. Meanwhile, to commuters, it would be beneficial if the rail transit fare will remain status quo. Very beneficial siya sa akin since student ako, so araw-araw may pasok, araw-araw nag-LRT. So since nagtataasan na yung presyo ng mga bilihin ngayon, ng pamasahe pati sa mga... Jeep, uh, sobrang makakatulong na hindi pa siya magtataas kasi pag nagtaas siya, ano, uh, mas li lilit na ilalo yung budget para sa iba, like for pagkain, for school projects. Siguro, ano, kung hindi pa sila magtataas as of now, mas makakasip pa kami ngayon kasi sa, sa public transport natin like jeepneys and other public transportation, sobrang taas. Para sa akin, malaki, malaking binipesyo siya. Kasi kung tutuusin eh, in comparison sa jeep or bus pala, mas mahal ang bus kaysa LRT, LRT, MRT. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Prosecutor General Benedicto Malcontento disclosed that they created a three-member panel of prosecutors. This panel will handle the consolidated murder cases over the killing of broadcaster Percy Lapid and alleged middleman June Villamor. The panel will be headed by Deputy State Prosecutor Olivia Torrevillas and will be composed of Senior Assistant State Prosecutors Josie Cristina Dugay and Charlie Guhit. Justice Secretary Boying Rimulia believes it is too early to talk about the possible admission of suspended Bureau of Corrections Chief Gerald Bantag to the Witness Protection Program, or WPP. This was after the brother of slain broadcaster Percy Lapid Roy Mabasa said in an interview that Bantag may qualify for the WPP should he come out and reveal more information on the case. Remulia says there are processes in discharging a person as a state witness. We're getting out of the out of the game. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's wishful thinking. Because to be discharged, you have to be the least guilty. The Justice Chief adds they are monitoring the whereabouts of Bantag and others accused in the killing. 
The Taguig court has concluded today the hearing over the petition of actor-comedian Vong Navarro to post bail over his rape case. Dante Amento has the story. The Taguig Regional Trial Court Branch 69 conducted a fifth and last hearing over Vong Navarro's petition for bail today. Model Denise Cornejo was presented for the recross examination. Cornejo and his lawyer, Howard Calleja, did not give any statement. Navarro's camp, on the other hand, believes they have done everything. But it is still the court who would rule the matter. It's the court which will decide the case. We, can, we do not know what the results will be. But as I said earlier on, we did our best. We did everything that uh, was necessary in our belief to show the truth. Meanwhile, tomorrow both parties will have to offer the formal documentary evidence in court. On Monday, November 14, the parties or the prosecution and the defense will also file their comment on the submitted evidence. And Navarro's plea to post bail will be submitted for resolution afterwards. Ang next na mangyayari is mag-offer sila ng evidence, may mga documentation sila na gusto nilang i-offer sa korte. Magkakomento kami, kami rin ay magsasubmit ng aming sariling formal offer. Magro-rule si court tapos submitted for resolution. So anytime after November 14, uh, the matter is submitted for resolution. Attorney Alma Malyonga, Navarro's legal counsel, said they are hoping that the resolution will be released within this month. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. After refusing to accept the migrants in the humanitarian ships docked in Italy's ports, the Italian government has finally allowed them to disembark. Paul Gacchalian will tell us why live. Yes, Paul? Giona, Italian authorities have finally allowed refugees and migrants from the ships Geo Barons and Humanity One. This after the Italian government had initially denied their entry and only allowed selected people whom they deemed vulnerable over the weekend. 747 passengers aboard the ships disembarked in Italy on Tuesday because of the physical and psychological conditions. The head of operations of Humanity One for the SOS Humanity Group, Till Rommenhall, expressed their relief after passengers were assigned to a place of safety which is required by the maritime law. Meanwhile, another ship, Ocean Viking, operated by the European organization SOS Mediterranee, has been on voyage for two weeks and also left the Italian region Sicily, transporting 243 people to France. Giorgia Meloni, the new Prime Minister of Italy who was instated last week, has kept quiet, not responding to the request for a safe harbor made by the rescue groups. Rome has previously sent letters to the Norwegian and German embassies in Italy addressing their concern as the non-government operated ships were not coinciding with European security protocols. Back to you, Giona. Thank you, Paul, for that live report. Tens of thousands of nurses in the United Kingdom are set to go on strike, which threatens the, to add pressure to the already strained health system in the country. Nerissa Dando will tell us why, live. Yes, Nerissa? Good evening, Giona. For the first time in history, UK's nurses will be walking out after they have voted for action over staffing shortages and also demand for, for better pay. According to the Royal College of Nursing, or RCN, the industrial action involving more than 300,000 union members is set to begin before this year ends. Over the past 10 years, the National Health Service, or NHS, NHS nurses have seen their salaries drop by up to 20%. This while the cost of living are going up, leaving nurses to struggle with paying their bills and feed their families. Just in the past year, Giona, the industry faced had almost 47,000 vacancies and over 40,000 nurses across England left their profession. RCN's General Secretary Pat Collins says that the union calls for a pay rise of 5% above inflation to address the declining real terms pay over the years. 
It's always our last resort, but we've been left with no other choice. I also know that some of you will be disappointed that your place of work, despite the hardest of campaigning, has narrowly missed out this time. But for the first time in the Royal College of Nursing's 106 year history, members in hundreds of NHS workplaces across the UK are now able to take action. Services for emergency treatment will be kept up. Therefore, personnel in the a &E department and intensive care units will remain on duty. However, a majority of planned care is expected to be cancelled, meaning that planned surgeries will post will most certainly be delayed. Negotiations between union representatives and Pacific specific trust may determine whether cancer services are continued. Additionally, community services will be affected, even though hospitals would probably bargain to keep emergency services such as rapid response teams. It is anticipated that staffing levels will be comparable to those that are maintained on bank holidays. Giona? Thank you, Narissa, for that live report. We'll share more global stories with you later. But for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Giona. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. announced the aggressive housing program of the government during a roundtable meeting with Cambodian business leaders at the 40th and 41st ASEAN summits and related summits in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. The chief executive said the program is intended to address the housing shortfall of about 6 million units in the country. He also added that his administration will try very hard to aim for 1 million low-cost and socialized homes a year. The president has noted that the lack of housing brings extent into the social side and it becomes a problem for the rest of the society. In a statement, President Marcos stressed the importance of having a marketplace and other essential structures nearby government's housing facilities to make it practical for people to live there. The House Committee on Disaster Response Panel has approved House Bill No. 6, which seeks to establish evacuation centers in every city and municipality. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. In order to avoid the use of schools as evacuation centers, a House bill was filed in Congress seeking to establish evacuation centers in every city and municipality. This would make temporary shelters always available to Filipinos, especially during calamities. According to lawmakers, there should be no trade-off between protecting lives and education of students. During the House Panel Committee hearing, experts reiterated the need to have hazard maps for disaster prevention and response. According to Dr. Mahar Lagmay, Executive Director of Project NOAA, evacuation centers should be built on safe areas. He also added that there were instances where evacuation centers were also hit by calamities for being in disaster-prone areas. There are still places, if we combine the, the disaster, disastrous areas, the hazard areas, some places in a barangay or a municipality that are safer than other places. But we need maps that not only depict the hazards, but also the safest places in the community. Lawmakers agree with using hazard maps, saying it is also the responsibility of the local government to choose areas that will be safe from disasters. It should also be approved by an expert agency such as the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX. According to FIVOX, there is already an existing multi-agency initiative and a database system that can help in identifying disaster-prone areas. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Justice Department has vowed to instill reforms in the embattled Bureau of Corrections or BUCOR, including the reshuffling of its personnel and stopping contrabands inside the National Penitentiary. This report will tell us why. Amid the controversies hounding the Bureau of Corrections or BUCOR, Justice Secretary Boeing Rebulia plans to implement radical changes in the system in two to four years. These include re-evaluating people in BUCOR and sending airing personnel to other parts of the country. I think the general attack in India had a very good uh, intention of making things better. Pero, you know, 
não não tem um beijo em piro e passa por exatamente da besta da tapa do meu coração mas é de nós o que é bad habits we have to change the people who are watching over this whole system mas é que eu não mantive eu não mantive tudo em dia in today's Senate plenary debates on the Justice Department's proposed budget for next year, some senators want to see changes in the system as soon as possible. Give them uh, two to four years daw ho, eh, talaga mag-implement ho sila ng uh, mahigpit na sistema. Mr. Chairman, in two to four years, pwede ba natin gawin two to four months? Kung gusto, maraming paraan. Kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. Yung four months ho, eh, meron na hong may pinapangako na ho silang pagbabago. Maaring okay. hindi 100% pero eh, umpisa na ho at magpapakitang gilas na ho sila. In a bid to decongest the new beloved prisoner NBP, Remulia eyes to begin the construction of a super maximum security facility next year. The DOJ also plans to request 5 billion pesos for the immediate repairs of other penal colonies in the country. Within a month, the Justice Chief also vows to address the rampant smuggling of contrabands inside the National Penitentiary, including cell phones and other gadgets used for communication. So we the Senate approved the proposed 27.9 billion peso budget of the DOJ and its attached agencies for next year. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Russia's defense minister has ordered his troops to withdraw from the city of Kherson, which was annexed earlier in the war. Joselito Likido will tell us why, live. Yes, Joselito? Good evening, Giona. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigo announced the withdrawal of Russian military troops from the city of Kherson and the area surrounding the Dnipro River. The announcement is seen to be one of the most significant setbacks Russia has encountered and a potential turning point of the ongoing war. General Sergei Sorovikin, Russia's overall commander of the war, stated that it was no longer possible to provide supplies to Kherson. Sergei Shoigo agreed with Sorovikin's statement, saying that the, their priority is always the life and health of their servicemen and must also consider the threats being faced by the civilian population. However, Ukraine's presidential senior advisor Mikhailo Podolyak remains skeptical about the announcement, saying that it's too early to talk about Russian troops pulling out of Kherson, and that Ukraine will only base territory liberation on actual intelligence data rather than staged TV statements. Meanwhile, U Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky continues to accuse Russia of widespread strikes on, on Ukraine's energy system, using explosive drones, rockets, heavy artillery, and aircraft to attack eight regions in the southeast. He added that during the attacks, at least nine civilians were killed and 24 wounded in 24 hours. Giona? Thank you, Joselito, for that live report. The parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp will reduce its workforce by 13% and will freeze recruitment through first quarter of next year. Monit Kakandas will tell us why. The valuation of tech companies that boomed during pandemic has collapsed this year due to the historically high inflation and swiftly rising interest rates. Meta Platforms Incorporated has announced Wednesday it will reduce its workforce by 13% or more than 11,000 employees due to rising costs and a weak advertising market, Meta's largest source of income. Losing more than two-thirds of its value, Meta also announced its plans to reduce discretionary spending and extend the hiring freeze until early 2023. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO of Meta Platforms, acknowledged the responsibility of the company's decision. Zuckerberg's financial commitment to the metaverse, a virtual reality technology, has alarmed Meta's investors for investing more than $10 billion annually on this platform while shifting away from social media. TikTok is also becoming a threat as the younger generation prefer the video sharing app than Instagram. 
According to Zuckerberg, the changes were factored by lower revenue than expected while operating efficiently. Monica Canlas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Giona Pravado, live from London, United Kingdom. Good, e good evening. The Department of Education, or DepEd, launched an automated system to various online transactions to ease workload of teachers and non-teaching staff. Janice Inhente reports. To fast-track the process in getting various documents and transactions and to reduce the workload of teaching and non-teaching staff, the Department of Education National Capital Region ruled out a system, or dubbed as Prioritize, Rethink, Innovation, Measure, and Evaluate, or Prime Automation that will streamline processes with its 11 automated systems. The said systems will allow DepEd and CR office and schools to reduce human intervention in processing of some transactions that is usually done in person. Some of the services that can be processed online through Prime Automation include Client Satisfaction Survey, Document Tracking System, Cash Management System, Human Resource Information System, and Statistics HR Management System. Regulatory services are also available, such as application of private school for permit and recognition, issuance of special order for senior high school candidates for graduation, request for tuition increase of private schools and office performance dashboard, and learning and development information system. As much as possible, sana mabawasan yung turnaround time sa mga inquiry, request, uh, mga uh, action documents at the same time human error mabawasan din. So kung maiiwasan natin na yung uh, oras ng tao dun sa mga paulit-ulit na ginagawa ay magawa na through artificial intelligence, they can have more time thinking of other programs na makakapagpa-improve pa ng service delivery at the same time mayroong oras para sa ating mga kliyente na matugunan yung kanilang pangangailangan particularly the walk-in. Cabral said, the system is cloud and role-based and cannot be accessed without user ID and password of an accredited DepEd personnel and data privacy protection are in place. Hindi mo siya basta-basta ma-access ma kung wala kang account, user ID, and you have your password. So these are minimal, but uh, I understand na sa dami naman ng mga mahuhusay ngayon, Lahat nga ng system pwede nilang pasukin. But just the same, uh, kaya meron kaming dalawang fallback. It's either on-premise at saka uh, on-cloud. So kung pumalya tayo doon sa cloud, at least uh, yung system mag-work pa din through a local area network. DepEd NCR is willing to share the system with other DepEd regional offices. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Environment Department supports the mining sector in the country, believing that it could contribute to the economy. But an environmental advocate group emphasized the importance of strictly following mining laws. Ray Palayo will tell us why. There are about 9 million hectares of potential mining areas in the country according to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DENR. Yusik Jonas Leones said that this would translate to a value of 7 trillion pesos if all these minerals like gold, nickel, gravel, and sand will be properly extracted. DENR will conduct natural assets, accounting evaluation in potential mining areas as basis if it will be more profitable to conduct mining in a particular area. For example, we can see the protected area, and the amount, the cost, the uh, benefits that we can get. So we can balance that. But the Alianza Tigil Mina said that mining areas are protected areas like forests and agricultural land and or island. They insist that the government should implement the laws on mining to avoid the negative effect in environment. We, we cannot accept mining. Nasasabihin nyo, meron tayong kinikitang pera dito ang bansa. 
Pero sinasakripisyo natin yung kabuhayan, yung buhay ng mga nandoon na sa mga lugar na. The group also favors a lawmaker's proposal to increase the tax on mining. They should also have value adding before the product will be exported so that the country will gain more from the extracted mineral. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Kasangbahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the global prayer for humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 11, it says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. And those are the reasons behind the news, November 10, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.